Lawlessness can never be the answer, whether for regimes, private companies, or even individuals. It's like what they say about the Wild West. In the end, every town needs a sheriff. And that's what the government of India is trying to do, to regulate a space that has enjoyed complete freedom, social media. This was always going to be controversial because you cannot bracket the internet as good or bad. Social media companies know this and they leverage this. We have been reporting on the ongoing spat between Twitter and the government of India. It's a classic example of the good versus bad debate. And today both sides stepped up the offensive. Twitter says it is concerned about its employees and their safety. Let me pull out their statement. This is what they've said. Right now, we are concerned by recent events regarding our employees in India and the potential threat to freedom of expression for the people we serve. Twitter has raised three broad issues. Number one is obviously about its employees in India. Number two is about the new regulations having a compliance officer in India, a 24 by 7 grievance redressal mechanism and so on, the new rules that India introduced three months back. Twitter believes that these rules are undemocratic. And number three, Twitter wants to extend the deadline. It wants India to publish the protocols of regulations and they want three months to review these protocols. How has the government of India responded? It has assured Twitter that there is no risk to its employees and they will always remain safe in India. But on the second accusation, the government has pushed back hard. This is how the IT ministry in India responded. Twitter's statement is an attempt to dictate its terms to the world's largest democracy. Through its actions and deliberate defiance, Twitter seeks to undermine India's legal system. Strong words from both sides indeed. This is essentially a turf battle. Big tech feels the internet is their domain. No outside authority has the right to interfere. The government says internet is populated by people and it is their right to protect the people. It is also their job to protect the people. Which argument has more merit then? Unregulated social media has many pitfalls. Fake news, defamation, cyber bullying. These are all problems that concern citizens, so it is natural for a government to interfere. But the question is, how far can this interference go? Let's look at two issues that Twitter keeps raising. Holding a compliance officer legally accountable for content, is that really asking too much? In the United States, the CEO himself is filtering content. He is banning former presidents. He's deleting tweets and pleading before the Congress. But outside America, big tech goes rogue. Today, Twitter said it wants to protect the privacy of Indians. But that's not exactly a company's job. Privacy is a fundamental right in India. If the government violates it, we have courts for redressal. The second issue that Twitter keeps talking about is monitoring. Will they be forced to unlock encryption? Will we end up in a surveillance age? Now, these predictions are a bit premature, and I'll tell you why. In the United States, the government is always asking for backdoor decryption. The FBI has been asking Apple to unlock iPhones for a long time, but nobody called America a surveillance state. The fact is, this is uncharted territory. Nobody knows what regulated social media will look like. There is no playbook for governments to look at. Right now, it is about deploying a system and addressing problems as they come. Do we need checks? Of course we do. There are dozens of agencies monitoring what the government does, and it's only fair that big tech has the same scrutiny. All of this then boils down to accountability. Who is accountable to the people of India? A company based in the United States or a government elected by the people of India? This was the Indian government statement in a nutshell. Let me once again quote for you. Protecting free speech in India, and this is what the government of India is saying, protecting free speech in India is not the prerogative of a private, for-profit, foreign entity like Twitter. But it is the commitment of the world's largest democracy. Twitter keeps talking about cooperation and constructive dialogue. But in India, they're doing the opposite, apparently. Take their Indian subsidiaries managing director, for instance. This is how the Delhi police has described his actions. Twitter India subsidiary TCIPL's managing director chose to adopt a path of evasiveness instead of cooperation. Initially, TCIPL's managing director shared in his response that he was merely a sales head. He had no role whatsoever in any operations relating to content. 
It is to be noted that TCIPL stands that its managing director is a mere sales head runs contrary to his very own previous press interviews where he elaborately discussed Twitter's plan to devise methods to identify abusive and manipulative content. Basically, the MD claims to be a sales head. That's what the Delhi police is saying. So how does this war of words end? WhatsApp has a lawsuit pending against new laws. We don't know what the courts are thinking or what they will do. But one thing is certain. We need regulation. The internet cannot be the Wild West anymore. Big tech must accept their new reality. Then we can move on to the next step, which is a meaningful conversation on regulations. Because right now, amid all of this back and forth, the actual guidelines and proposals are getting buried. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.